ever get that urge? You know that feeling where you just want to dive deep into something? Well, today we're going full on geologic, getting into the nitty gritty of the Wasimak gold deposit using your research. And trust me, this isn't your run of the mill gold vein we're talking about. This deposit has a story and it's a twisted one. You're right to be intrigued. Wasimak really throws a wrench in our neat little systems of classifying gold deposits. How so? Well, it sits right on a line between two totally different gold forming environments. So it's like a a geological hybrid. Exactly. A real head scratcher. That's like finding a first edition, right? But inside, there's handwritten notes from the author. Makes it even more valuable. Yeah. Helps us understand the story, how it all came to be. Okay, so two different gold formations in one place. I'm hooked already. Set the scene for us. Where are we and what makes this deposit so unique? Picture Canada. We're in a region called the Ebba TB Greenstone Belt. Already famous for its gold mines, right? Exactly. But Wasimak, nestled in a fault zone, is different. It doesn't just have one type of gold formation, but two distinct types. That's what makes it so special. Two types of gold formations. All right, you got to break this down for us. What are the telltale signs that make these two types so distinct? How can you tell them apart? It's all about reading the rocks like a detective, looking for clues. Love it. One type we find this in what we call the potassic alteration zone is characterized by the presence of specific minerals, particularly microcline and quartz. Think of it like baking a cake, right? right? You have the right ingredients. Exactly. Microcline and quartz, those are our key ingredients in this gold formation process. So it's not just about finding a gold nugget. It's about understanding the recipe that created that nugget in the first place. Exactly. And in this particular recipe, we often find the gold hidden within pyrite. You know, pyrite. Sewell's gold. That's the one. It's a common iron sulfide mineral. And it's often hanging out with telluride minerals. A dynamic duo. Right. So imagine you find these tiny treasure chests. That's the pyrite, but they're locked inside bigger, less valuable chests. This combo of the pyrite, the tellurides, it suggests a specific type of gold formation, one that's potentially linked to what we call a buried alkaline intrusion deep underground. A secret underground layer where gold is formed. Now that's an image. But you said there are two types here, right? So what about the other side of the story, the other gold formation? Right. So completely different from those hidden treasures the albitic alteration zone, as it's called. That's where things get really interesting. Okay, I'm all ears. This is where we see the gold in a more visible form, often as free grains. And the size of these grains, how they're all mixed in with fractured pyrite, well, points to something massive being involved. Tectonic forces. These forces play the key role in reshaping and concentrating the gold. Wait, hold on. Are we talking about those crazy, powerful forces that move continents around, cause earthquakes? What do those have to do with gold? You got it. Picture a jeweler, right? They take this scattered gold dust and use immense pressure to fuse it into bigger, bolder pieces. That's essentially what those tectonic forces did at Wasimak, particularly in these albedic zones. So in one area, we've got this early hidden gold, maybe from that secret layer intrusion you mentioned. And in another area, we see evidence of later stage gold that's been completely remodeled and concentrated by these tectonic forces. It's like this deposit had a geological makeover. It's true. A geological makeover. It's like one of those home renovation shows, you know, where they take something totally blah and turn it into something spectacular. But in this case, forget paint and those fancy tools. We're talking about tectonic plates shifting, mountains moving, intense stuff. Oh, absolutely. It's dramatic transformation. And what's wild is that this whole renovation, this makeover, driven by those tectonic forces, it's like the key to understanding how Wasimak ended up with so much gold. Okay, so walk us through it. How do these massive forces actually create a gold makeover? Are we talking mountains rising and valleys forming? Paint me a picture. All right, so imagine this. Way down deep, right, where these gold deposits are hanging out, you've got these giant tectonic plates. They're always moving, pushing, grinding against each other. Can you picture it? Oh yeah, like a slow motion wrestling match. And all that pressure, it puts immense stress on the rocks stuck in the middle. Imagine you're squeezing and stretching this giant slab of clay. What's going to happen? Get a crack, right? Break in certain places. Exactly. Geologists, we call those cracks fractures and that breaking process, brachiation. And they're all over the place in Wasimak's albedic zones, remember, the areas with all that visible gold. Right, the zones where it seems like those tectonic forces really went wild. Exactly. So picture this. Before those tectonic forces got to work, the gold was all spread out in the rocks. Imagine, like, those tiny little glitter particles in a snow globe. Some of it maybe even locked away, invisible, inside other minerals. 
So it's trapped like those prizes at the bottom of a cereal box. Got to dig through all those flakes to get to the good stuff. Perfect analogy. Now, shake that snow globe. Or in our case, let those tectonic forces do their thing. What happens? The glitter goes everywhere. Well, I guess in this case, the gold gets redistributed. You got it. And in the process, it gets concentrated in new areas along those fractures and brecciated zones. So you end up with pockets of super concentrated gold. It's like those tectonic forces didn't just reshape the landscape. They acted like a giant gold mixer, right? Concentrating the gold in ways that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Exactly. And this isn't just a guess. Researchers studying other gold deposits, they've seen this too. This gold remobilization, as it's called, where those tectonic forces play a major role in creating deposits that are actually worth mining. This is blowing my mind. So you've got this early gold formation, maybe tied to that hidden secret layer intrusion we talked about. Oh, I... And then those tectonic forces come in, like, hold my beer and give it this dramatic makeover. It's like a two-act play, with each act adding to this incredible final masterpiece. But you hinted at something even cooler earlier. You said Wasimak might be a geological hybrid. Don't leave me hanging. What did you mean by that? A geological hybrid, whoa, it's like stumbling on some rare vintage sports car. But it's also somehow, like a super efficient electric vehicle at the same time, what are the chances, right? Two different gold deposit styles, just poof, coming together like this. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? That's the million dollar question, or well, maybe the multi-million ounce gold question in this case. Wasimak is so interesting because it doesn't fit in a neat little box. Our research, it suggests this deposit could be a blend a mix of what we call intrusion-related and orogenic gold deposits. Okay, so we talked about intrusions, that whole secret layer idea deep underground, but orogenic sounds intense, like mountain-moving kind of stuff. What's yep. the story there? It's all about mountain building. You got it. Orogenic gold deposits, they form from those incredible forces you get when tectonic plates collide. So picture this. Massive forces pushing mountains up from the Earth's crust. It creates immense pressure, heat, fluids flowing through every crack and crevice. Okay, so while those tectonic forces were busy giving Wasimak's existing gold a makeover, they were also potentially bringing in a fresh supply from deeper down, like adding even more sparkle to that geological snow globe we were picturing earlier. Exactly. You're getting it. Those fluids, they're often full of dissolved minerals, including gold. And as they move through the Earth's crust, they can deposit that precious cargo in just the right conditions. And here's the kicker with Wasimak. We see signs of both processes, that early intrusion-related gold formation and, and the later overprinting by these orogenic processes. It's wild. So how do you know it's not just one or the other? Like, how can you tell both processes were involved? Well, think back to those geological fingerprints, the ones we were talking about earlier. Those potassic alteration zones with their unique mix of minerals, all that hidden gold, that strongly points to an early stage of gold enrichment. And it's very similar to what we see in the Kirkland Lake Gold District. You know that one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Famous for its gold. Exactly. So we've got our secret layer checked off the list, right? Mm -hmm. Then those orogenic forces came along and added their own little twist to the story. A plot twist. I love it. All the evidence points to this later phase where those tectonic forces and the fluids they were pushing around basically overprinted that initial intrusion-related gold. Like they layered one geological process right on top of another. It created this hybrid deposit, a deposit with a way more complex and honestly way more interesting history than you'd expect just looking at it. It's incredible how much is hidden beneath the surface, isn't it? I mean, this is what makes geology so fascinating. It's not just about the rocks we can see. It's like this whole other world hidden deep down full of these incredible forces and processes shaping everything. And Wesemak, with its dual nature, it gives us this amazing glimpse into that world. It makes you realize just how powerful these geological forces are, how they've shaped and reshaped our planet over millions of years. And honestly, it makes you wonder what other geological hybrids are out there just waiting to be discovered, what other mysteries are hidden in the earth just waiting for us to uncover them. That's the beauty of it. There's always more to find, always something new to learn. And for you listening, remember the story of Wasmac. Reminds us that even when we're talking about rocks and minerals, things aren't always what they seem. Keep asking questions. Keep exploring. Who knows what you might dig up.